In nature, animals evolve all kinds of specialized tools. Take Darwin's finches as an example. While the ground finch's wider beaks are good for cracking nuts, the cactus finch's long beaks are evolved for probing flowers. Beak such as tools with different shapes evolve for different jobs. Can we take inspiration from nature for our robotic systems and automate the design of task-specific grippers? We present fit to form a framework for learning a deep 3D generative model for a robot gripper finger design. Given a target object, the goal of the algorithm is to generate a pair of fingers for a parallel jaw gripper, which would satisfy the following design objectives. First, the gripper should be able to successfully grasp the object. Second, it should be able to maintain the grasp under external forces. Third, the gripper should also be able to grasp the target object with perturbations in its orientation. Moreover, the fingers should be feasible to manufacture. Specifically, they should not be disconnected from the base, and they should not have multiple connected components. There are two main challenges in designing such a system, how to represent the high-level design objectives, and how to efficiently navigate a large design space to produce feasible solutions. To effectively model the design objectives, we train a fitness network to predict the values of the design objectives for a given pair of gripper fingers and target object. To efficiently navigate the large design space, we use a 3D generator network that produces 3D finger geometries based on the target grasp object. The parameters of the generator network can be directly optimized to maximize the fitness network score prediction. In the following slides, we review the finger generation strategies learned by fit to form The first strategy is single-sided scoop where one of the generated finger is hollow and the other has a flat face. During grasping, the flat face pushes the object inside the hollow cavity to successfully grasp the object. On the right is the imprint baseline for comparison. Here are more examples of single-sided scoop. The second strategy is double-sided scoop, where both fingers have a significant amount of empty space to cage larger objects and protruding structures for additional grass stability. This is the corresponding imprint gripper. Here are more examples for double-sided scoop. The third strategy is dynamic hook, where instead of directly creating a form closure around the target object, the generated fingers hook the target object's protruding structures during the lifting process. On the other hand, imprint fingers fail to grasp in absence of this hooking behavior. Here are a few more examples for dynamic hook. For objects with detailed geometry, the imprint fingers are highly sensitive to misalignment and often fail to close in on the object properly. Fit to form employs a relaxed imprint strategy where the generated fingers form a closure around the object, but also have some extra empty space for better robustness. Here, we show a few more examples for the relaxed imprint strategy. Now, we show the analysis for grass stability. Now, we show the analysis for robustness, where the perturbation to the target object z-axis orientation is shown along the bottom. Now, we show the ablation study with the imprint baseline as well as other variations of our approach. Here's the quantitative evaluation. Overall, fit to form generates gripper finger designs that achieve more stable and robust grasps compared to alternative approaches. Now, we show our 3D printed fingers mounted on the WSG50 gripper. Here, we compare against the imprint baseline and the original WSG50 fingers. Now we show some more real-world experiments for our fingers.
Finally, we show more generated grippers for ShapeNet objects and for adversarial objects. Thanks for watching.